Well, if I told you this was not really the full story here, uh, right. if you're looking at it on the surface here and you don't have any background information, uh, there's a lot more going on here uh, than was represented in a graph like this. So what is the real story? What happens when sometimes construction projects are seemingly hitting their deadline and then all of a sudden are going off the rails? Now, obviously there's a lot of factors involved, but we can use the tools of forensic delay analysis to help us better understand what's happened on a project. And that's why I've invited my collaborator, Tyler Conter from Point Construction Advisory Group to help us dig into this a little bit more and check out some of the techniques that Tyler uses to help figure out what's really going on on this project. So if, if we look at the graphic we have here and we look at our x-axis running along the bottom, we have the data date of a bunch of subsequent schedule updates, right? And on, on our vertical axis, we have the completion date of the project. If you are an owner and executive, a project controls manager, and you are simply viewing the schedule every month, this is probably something you've seen before where you are tracking the completion date of the project on a monthly basis. So it looks like in that better period, the contractor, I know we're looking at this from the owner's perspective, but it looks like the contractor you know, performed better in that period and performed a lot worse. But I suspect you're going to tell me the opposite or something different. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you may be surprised by what you don't see from a graph like this, just looking at the completion date of a project month over month. So let's, uh, let's talk about a concept called uh, bifurcation in our schedules and in our monthly updates. Uh, we have two categories uh, uh, of delays or potential recovery. Uh, we have progress delays, and that's gonna be associated with actual starts, actual finishes, and changes in remaining duration, okay? Yeah. Those three things, and those three things alone. Whereas we also have revisions. And in our course, I go into this in a great number of detail. There's a countless number of uh, different revisions that you can incorporate. And, and these revisions, uh, for the most part, we have some anomalies, are implemented into the schedule to forecast mitigations to potential progress delays like what we see here. Keep in mind, the graph you were looking at is still our better period. What you're seeing here, the 49 net days of delay over 15 months. And what you're seeing here are the exact same time period. The so, difference here is, is that we've gone ahead and split up or bifurcated uh, the progress delays from the schedule revisions, right? Um, by doing this, we get a better grasp of how much progress was lost during a period and who that progress delay could potentially be allocated to. So we actually, we did a video that explains this kind of half step updating process. And it looks like you've, you as a forensic analysis are able to pull those two updates apart. And then you're graphing the, the finish date of the progress schedule is the blue and the revision is in the red. That's absolutely correct. Let's take one of these periods, for example, let's, uh, this is, this is our September 30th, 2009 update here. And that's going to be represented by, by this uh, blue dot here. If you look at our next update, uh, October 31st, 2009, we lose progress. So that happened in this period. We get yep. to this top dot here, which is the completion date when we just incorporate our progress delays, like, like you described. We realize that. And then we incorporate revisions into our schedule to bring that uh, to bring that dot back down to where it was at the beginning of the period. You know, those are taking activities and shortening their durations in the future. Um, that's looking at our uh, logic, perhaps there are changes in logic, taking activities that were formerly uh, sequential and making them concurrent. That's reducing lags. Um, you know, the forecasted activities along our critical path. Ultimately, we went through that same process here, all these red lines that are now bringing back our progress delays. And we forecasted that we were going to mitigate 161 calendar days of our 210 calendar days of progress delay. Uh, and, and that's how we ended 
end up with our net delay of 49 calendar days. It's the exact same graph here. Um, it, I keep going back and forth. Yeah. It's the same graph. One just gives you a lot more information about what's actually going on on your project than the other. So I think of that revision delays as like what I, I would call it squeezing the project. We are we're trying to find time so that we can kind of get report our finished date closer to where it should be. So we're squeezing the project, which means we're taking any buffers that we might have had in there out. We're fast tracking things where we probably can't actually fast track them in the field. And so so we were progress delays 210 days. We were we, we had bad progress. Like we didn't perform well for 210, uh, losing 210 days in the schedule. And to, to kind of compensate, we squeezed, we then squeezed another 161 days out of the schedule. Um, it seems like it's just a bad situation all around if you're trying to trying to accomplish this project. Yeah, no, of course. Um, you know, the, your characterization of squeezing the project, uh, you know, that uh, that is something we see. It, it, it's borrowing from a later period, revising your plan, revising your forecast, uh, which is ultimately going to make it more difficult in a lot of cases to uh, complete that work later on. If we go back to our original graphic here, we'll see in our better period, we ultimately come to an end of what we're characterizing as the better period on November 30th of 2010. We see a very drastic increase in the completion date of the project after that period. And I think some of that can be attributed to what you're saying there, Michael, that uh, we're squeezing yeah. the project at a certain point. Uh, you can no longer squeeze the project. And this graph here that you see where we maintain the completion date uh, for a long time until we can no longer maintain it uh, is something that I see very typically in what I do. But let me ask you this question. How could a contractor kind of use some of this information to kind of better uh, self-assess their own performance? What I would say is that on a monthly basis after the initial schedule, a contractor can create a progress-only schedule meaning all they've done is status the schedule with the actual physical progress in the field. Um, save that schedule, put it in a folder somewhere else. Um, but it, it gives you really good visibility uh, into where you are actually losing progress on, on the project and, and not that net effect of coupling that with forecast and mitigations that may or may not ultimately be realized. Makes sense. It sounds like it could be it could be a very proactive way to kind of self manage your own performance on the contractor side, and just be aware. You know, if you are squeezing yourself, you could be you can really be aware of how you're squeezing yourself by doing this kind of analysis. Of course, Tyler, thank you so much for this. It was really helpful. Thank you, Michael. Uh, always a pleasure. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you in another course soon. Hey, if you like this video, we offer a course on forensic delay analysis in conjunction with Tyler from Point Construction Advisory Group. Check out the page, we'll put a link to it below to find out the next course time. And if you like the video, please click subscribe and like and do that. Ciao.